All right, everyone. So for today's uh, topic, it will be YouTube. We're going to use, by some measures, the second most popular social network in the world. And that might be an interesting stat for two reasons. One is that, uh, well, Facebook is the largest network in the world. Uh, and second place, by some measures, is YouTube. And another reason why it might be interesting, an interesting fact is because you might not think of it as a social network. You use Facebook, and that's got all the uh, traipsings of a social network. It has the ability for you to post something. It has the ability for people to comment on your post, to uh, like your post, to share your post. Those are the things you do classically in a social network, which you also do on Twitter, which you also do on Instagram, which you also do on YouTube. You post something to YouTube, you can get comments, likes, shares, traffic, just like any social network. So um, it behooves us to think about using YouTube's reach for whatever our online presence is. I'm a, I'm a web design company, I'm a realtor, um, I'm a, a bakery, anything basically. I have some sort of website, some sort of online presence. And I should also think about using YouTube to increase my visibility online, to increase the traffic to my website. And on my website is where I'm going to sell my baked goods, or I'm going to have the listings of the properties that I sell, or I'm going to have the, you know, request a free quote. Whatever I'm trying to do online on my website, I want to get traffic to it. Google Plus is one way, Facebook is another way, Instagram is another way, YouTube is another way. But that has its own set of uh, ups and downs and pitfalls and do's and don'ts, which we'll talk about today. So what we'll do first is I'm going to give you a sample video, which you can use or use your own. Uh, and uh, the, w the place that it's at is everyone's computer should be on. You want to go to the desktop and then go over to the computer window at the top left. Open computer window and then you will see classroom data under the network location. Classroom location, classroom data, drive Z, double click drive Z. Z as in zebra. And we'll scroll down to find our class folder which is campus Google double-click the campus Google folder. The syllabus is there from last week. If you didn't get it last week, if you want to get my email to request the videos, it's in there. But for today, for YouTube, I've got a folder right here. YT YouTube. And in there I've got a video. So what you want to do is drag that folder from your from my folder to your desktop or flash drive. Drag a copy to your desktop don't just double click my video in my folder, you want to drag it to your desktop or flash drive. And then you can close the network folder. So anything we want to do with YouTube, step one, we need a video. Here's a video for you. Did everyone, did everyone find that video? Get a copy of that? Let me uh, play it briefly. You won't be able to hear it, but I have a speaker up here, so I'll play it for a moment. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos for the Tech Review Tuesday. Today I've got some new hardware for you. This is the Motorola Moto E. It's one of the newest devices running Android. So I highly recommend this device and let's take a look why. So this device is very device really helps you get all your work here where you can take a So I give this five out of five stars and I highly recommend it. So this has been Victor Campos for the Tech Review Tuesday. See you next time. All right, I show you this video as an example of the possibility of what you can do with YouTube. I'm going to make some notes in a notepad file, and I'll put my notes in the folder uh, by the end of the day. Since we don't have time 
to really um, go into detail about this. Uh, I'll be making notes here and then we'll we'll talk about what we have time for. And what I mean is I've got a video ready for you. What we don't have time for is creating that video. Um, usually I teach a social media class part one and part two. And in part two we spend two days on YouTube. Day one of that is that we spend the day making a YouTube video. I provide you the raw uh, clips and we go in and we make something like this. And then part two, we we would talk in there what we're about to talk here today. So this video, as you'll notice, it has some sort of introduction at the beginning, text, animation, very cinematic. Then it starts off, I'm speaking, there's a fade in. Uh, there's some text that appears down here at the bottom in a moment, right there. Uh, there was a camera change where it was a little fade between I'm saying something and it fades to someone else. Briefly, you may have noticed. So I cut out parts like there. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I, uh, I dropped the phone and I cut it out. I have to edit the video. I went in and added something else over here, these stars, just to say this is a five-star phone. So I put in some... Uh, some animation there, and then it ends, and we've got credits at the end. Fade out, credits that scroll by. That's what we would do in the other class, which of course you don't have time for. It would take the whole class. Yes? Let's make some notes here. So, uh, recommendations, video editing recommendations. There's so many to choose from, but for Windows, I'm going to say Windows Movie Maker and for Mac iMovie. Those are two very good consumer level ones. They have a lot of great features in this class or that in, in that class where we make the video we would use Movie Maker. We've got it in these computers actually. Windows Movie Maker. And for the Mac I would recommend iMovie. Now those are the like affordable versions of things. You can also get the uh, very expensive ones, and these are cross-platform, so I'm going to say Pro versions. These are, uh, for example, Adobe Premiere. Um, what else is there? Um, uh, what's, that, what's the other big ones? Premiere, Lightwave, no, that's not it. Uh, there's a couple of really big ones I'm blanking at the moment. Adobe Premiere, uh, oh, Final Cut Pro. These are two pretty big famous ones, very expensive. I don't know their prices at the moment, but they're easily in hundreds of dollars. Hundreds of dollars uh, software. And there is sort of like a, uh, what would you call it? Um, Adherent, Adventist, I'm blanking on the word. Um, amateur, no, I can't remember the word. Uh, it's one level up above pro. We'll just say amateur. Um, there is the uh, Adobe Premiere Elements. That's like the junior version of Premiere. If regular Premiere, let's say traditionally would cost about $400, Premier Elements costs uh, about $80, $90. You can get it at Fry's, you can get it at, uh, I often see it over at Costco. It's the more consumer level of it. Uh, it's a step up from iMovie and Movie Maker. These two are, are, are free. You can get them from the App Store, Windows or Mac. They're very powerful, but they are limited. These are the higher levels up. Let me rearrange them like this. And there's many in between that I could name. I have to look them up. But usually, I personally am often using Windows Movie Maker. Uh, even for when I do this for a client. I'm not sure if I, if I said it on the first day of class here. Uh, but not only do I teach these sorts of concepts at various colleges, I also am part of a company where we do these things. So whatever I'm showing you in these classes, I'm doing for clients. And I can show you examples a little bit later um, of... Uh, of client work, but usually even for a real paying client, we're doing Windows Movie Maker. Let me 
check one thing. I forgot to show to check something here. I'll make a note. I forgot to load up a file. Um, I'll provide that in just a moment. Um, but we need to say here uh, YouTube is the second largest social network. Uh, very valuable for companies. It has hundreds of millions of users, probably around, uh, by some measurements, 700 to 900 million users uh, globally. Uh, Facebook has about 1.6 billion users globally, and uh, therefore YouTube is in second place. It's valu very valuable for, for companies because this is yet another way to reach an audience. The big catch, of course, is you need a video to get onto YouTube to, to use it effectively. That's the video that I've given you. So you can, uh, we'll do here briefly, types of videos. Review videos. How-to videos. screen capture videos. I have a list that I'll provide you uh, very soon. I don't have it handy, but I'll give that to you in just a moment. Here's the types of videos that you can create for YouTube. Uh, review videos, pretty self-explanatory. You're going to review your product or someone else's product. Um, let's think in terms of both ways how any of these videos would be useful to you. You're a business, so you can create YouTube videos about your business review video. Yes, you can review your own product or you can have your customers review your products for you. If you are active on social media, let's say you're also on Twitter and Facebook, you could uh, put out a call on your Facebook. Hey everyone, uh, review our, our current product, send us the link, send us the link and uh, we'll, we'll feature your video, or we'll promote your video, or you'll get a 10% coupon, or something to entice people to do the work for you. What if you have other people doing reviews of your products? So I will say you, create your own uh, videos about your products. You're reviewing your own product. You're showcasing your own product. You're saying what's good about it, the best things about your product. Uh, I'm a, um, let's say uh, I've got this fictional company, Victor's Bakery. Uh, I'm going to create a YouTube video where we're talking about our, our newest taste sensation, uh, the cronut. Have you heard of what a cronut is? That's a donut made out of a croissant. So it's going to sweep the nation and our nation's hospitals. So I could do a video about that product, our own product. On the flip side, I'm going to say fans or customers. Have them create videos for you about your products, your products or your services. Uh, that, of course, a bit of easier said than done, but what I'm getting at is put out a call to in your social media channels, uh, your, your Facebook, your, your Twitter, your Instagram, whatever you're using, and, and tell your, your followers, friends and family, or whoever, uh, customers, hey, create a video for us. We'll pick the best one, we'll put it on our website. That's enough for most people. That fleeting internet fame is enough for most people. They made that video, it shows up on someone else's website, that's great, I'm, I'm famous. For other people, maybe they need a little bit more incentive and you can do uh, the best video will get uh, one free cronut with your first order. So whatever enticements you want to give out for people to do this for you, uh, could be valuable. How-to videos. That's pretty obvious. Um, this is 
this is any sort of video uh, showing how your product works. This is very common because it depends on what, what the product is, but I, uh, my company, like I said, we, we do this for a living, and we do photography. We do product photography for, for clients. And so I've got a bunch of photo gear, and a few years ago I wanted to buy a light tent or a light box, which is basically a big semi-transparent box that um, you then put lights into it and you can really light your product really well. You know, this kind of light right here wouldn't really photograph the product very well. We need this box. You put the product in, you put the lights into it, it's nice and bright, you see the details of the product. I, I bought that uh, light box um, uh, second hand actually, because they can get kind of expensive, but it was in great condition and I bought it, but it didn't have the original manual. So I went on, uh, I went on YouTube and I looked up the product and there was a video how to assemble and disassemble the light box. I didn't have the manual, so I was able to put it together to unfold it, but then when I wanted to fold it back up, because it would fold, it was a seven by seven or six by six foot box. I could stand inside of it, and it could fold down to this size, like this, uh, without taking it apart. It could fold in some weird way to get down to that size. Didn't have the manual, and I was having a hard time folding it. Looked it up on YouTube, and someone had made that video and it really helped me out. So for your own products, perhaps if you've got a complex product like that, how do you use your product? Show off your product. Um, make a video about that. Screen capture videos. Uh, recording your computer screen to instruct people. Not everyone needs or can create this kind of video because this one is uh, that a computer screen is being recorded. Just like I'm recording these videos for this class, I can use the same software which, which I'll mention in a moment to record my screen and teach people, let's say I'm a web designer, how to set up GoDaddy, how to install WordPress, I could create short videos about these web design topics and put them out on my YouTube. That could, if the video is a hit, that could get more fame and traffic for my website where I am a web designer trying to get hired to create websites, to set up WordPress. The software that I like to use for this task is called Open broadcaster software. It's free. It's for Windows and Mac and Linux. It's totally free. You can download it. You can set it up. It's very powerful. It's, it's the thing that you see when I start my recording here. It's this here. And I've got it set up in a way that it records my, my screen and my voice. And there you see when I'm speaking, you see my, my voice. And everything I'm doing on screen is recorded. This is very powerful because what I could do is I could set it up to be pretty complex. I don't, I don't do this because I think it gets in the way in our case. What I could do is I can set up this. Not only is it recording my screen, but I'm going to be right there in the corner. So as I'm talking to you, you're seeing me on screen, and then you're, you're seeing your instructor as you're watching the video. This is all for free, completely free software. It does need some setup and such. Uh, it's not super complicated, but the best thing about it is that it's... Uh, free and open source, and it works really well. Windows and Mac. So that's software that I would use there. Uh, I'll show some examples of these kinds of videos. But the uh, Open Broadcaster software, I use that to record my screen, and then I would still use iMovie or Movie Maker to remove my mistake, to add an intro, to add credits, um, effects, and such. So those are a few types of videos. There's many more, of course. Uh, we'll see some others. But uh, I'll say here, uh, advice for video production. There are two big secrets that you need to know about making a good video. One is visuals, and one is audio. Duh, of course. That's what a video is. A video is visuals and audio. That's the secret to a good video. Uh, that's the glib answer.
but the detailed answer is visuals. Focused, bright, meaningful. There's no real right or wrong answer for video production. If we're talking about in terms of cinema, for example, movies, um, the scene doesn't have to be focused to be an effective scene. Uh, it doesn't have to be bright, well-lit scene to be effective. Most likely it has to be meaningful, that's the point of a movie. For us, in our, in our terms of YouTube videos, I would recommend these things, highly recommend these things. You've got your product that you're showing off. And if you're recording it and the, and the ambience, ambient uh, environment is very dark, it's not going to show up well on the video. Um, every kind of um, video camera and such out there still pales in comparison to the best one, which is our eye. Our eye is the best camera because it, it works almost instantaneously in that if I look in this direction where it's brighter, my eye focused in a, in a millisecond. I look over here and it focused in a millisecond where it's darker. The camera on, on the phone, even, your, even a high-end expensive phone, even a high-end expensive $10,000 camera still has the limitations that it can't reach what the human eye can do. So to help it record your content in a nice bright environment, this is too dark here. I need to turn on all the lights and I need to be near a light for it to be a nice looking recording on my, on my device. It's very easy to get out of focus. The, the camera could get confused and when I'm recording myself here, it might, record the, it might be focused on the background and I'm slightly out of focus. You're not going to see it on the little screen here, but when you upload it to YouTube and someone views it full screen, you're a little out of focus. Out of focus. And meaningful would mean that everything that you're recording on screen that is visible on screen should be there for a reason. If you make a mistake, cut it out. If, you're, if you've got a lot of silence while you're trying to fix something, let's say you're recording me for an interview and I'm trying to do something here, cut that out. So what I mean by, uh, by meaningful, let's say edit the video, cut out the bad stuff, leave the good stuff, rearrange things in order. Like maybe I started to record myself and I started to say something and then I thought, oh, I should have said an intro. So I start to then say the intro and then in Movie Maker I cut the intro and put it first before what I start to say about the product. For audio, you want to have, I will say, um, mostly loud. You want to record uh, what you're trying to record in a loud way um, because it's better to start with something at a higher volume and cut it back than something that's really low and then you have to bring it up and then you can't bring it up because it's so soft. So you want to record something at a higher volume, uh, and then you can use the editor to bring it down. The opposite is doesn't work as well. Same thing here with if you didn't record something visually bright, the editor will give you some ability to brighten it up, but it has, again, the limitation of a machine rather than the human eye. You might not be able to brighten it as, as well as you could, and you're going to see a lot of weird textures and artifacts from artificially brightening the scene. So with audio, try to make it loud. Try to record it loud. Uh, so, hardware. Anything that records 1080p video. That's HD quality video. Most uh, of our cell phones are going to be able to do that. You don't need a high end $500, $1,000. $4,000 camera to record very good video. You can do it with the thing uh, with this phone in your pocket as long as it's recording at least 1080p video. Anything else is going to look low quality. So any modern Samsung phone, uh, iPhone phone, um, I've got this Windows phone. I really like the, the Lumia phones. They've always had really good visuals. 
but any any just about any kind of phone. But the big catch is we often um, again our eye fools us because this thing is so dumb. Even a ten thousand dollar camera is dumb compared to our eyes. And what I mean by that is I'm going to record the uh, the company president talking about the company, and so. Uh, let's say that the company president is sitting where Larry is sitting and I'm standing here and I'm going to record him talking. Lots of problems here. I'm too far. So he's going to be small in this, in this area. He's going to be, you know, one quarter or less of the screen. I should just simply get a little closer. Maybe I can zoom in, but maybe I should get a little closer. The reason I also want to get closer is his voice will record better. If I'm this far, most likely it won't record very well. These are designed really that when you're holding them like this, it records really well. Or when you're close to someone, if I'm that far, it's too far. I've got this microphone right here that I'm recording everything. It's a good length. You know, it's about arm length. If it's further than arm length, it might not record very loudly. So I was going to say something here, but let me let me just say here for for visuals, get close and for audio get close. Unless you invest in microphones and, and all of that. Have you seen those uh, newscasters and or sometimes you see someone has a little lapel microphone right here. Uh, there's a little microphone that clips to their to their lapel right here, their shirt. Uh, and then that's either wired or wireless connected over to their video recorder. That's how they get good audio because I may be standing over here and I'm recording Larry but he's got the microphone on his lapel so the audio records well. So for hardware, um, I personally uh, like and have used the Canon cameras, the Canon T-X. Well, uh, I have a T-2i at the moment, but that's already a few generations back. I believe the latest one is the T-6i, the T-Family. Uh, usually those are about, depending on which generation you're getting, $500 to $700. So yes, that's a big investment if you want to get higher quality. But again, these phones that you have probably would do very well. Uh, these kinds of cameras like these Canons, they shoot really good still photos and video. Um, I don't have it with me here, but an extra microphone that I that I have that I like is um, from the brand Zoom, and I like the uh, H2N. It's what you see actually in my video over here. That microphone that you see off to the side here—that's that's my H2. Um, I got it. I got it secondhand for a hundred dollars. Um, brand new, I'm not exactly sure, maybe 150, 200, I don't know, uh, but it records really well. Uh, it's portable, so you can record someone on the spot, and it records to the memory card, or like I've got it, I've got it plugged in directly to my laptop, so uh, it feeds right to my laptop, and I don't, uh, I don't run out of space on the memory. video for audio. I've already mentioned a couple of subjects, types of videos. See above. So a couple of kinds of subjects of what to what to record. Um, we'll see examples. And then um, Length, so doesn't apply. Whatever, uh, you will figure out what a good length is. You don't have to create a five-minute video, ten-minute, fifteen-minute. You you don't have to go really by any sort of time limit. You will organically figure out the length of your videos after you start to upload videos, and YouTube gives you stats to tell you you've been uploading ten-minute videos, but people only watch about eight minutes of it. So maybe that's going to tell me to guide me. I should start focusing on eight minute videos. People would watch them more completely perhaps. So any length really. 
works here. You can go down to, you know, 30 seconds up to 30 minutes. Sure. I've seen videos in all of that range. <coughs> the 30 second long ones could be like, you could create YouTube videos. Let's say you're more interested in, in writing reviews, of, of writing reviews rather than doing video reviews. You could create 15, 10, 30 second long videos simply recording yourself and say, hey everyone, I've got a new video about this new product, check us out on our website. Upload that and then a link in the description as we'll see how to do very soon, a link back to our website where at the website they'll read the full 500 word article where you've got your affiliate links or ads or whatever. Or you could do these 30 minute videos where you're showing step by step how to do every single thing about something. Um, these how-to videos are very popular. Uh, anecdotally, uh, I moved into uh, a new house recently and I inherited a broken doorbell. So I think, how do you break a doorbell? So uh, I looked up online how to fix a doorbell and I got several YouTube videos and I found one and I learned how, to, how a doorbell works and I fixed it. I'm, I'm here obviously, I'm not electrocuted so it, it worked. And it was about you know five minute long video and I learned uh, about the doorbell that it has two chimes and it's really cool. So that one was a you know five minute long video. Obviously the person had to record what was going on and then use some sort of editor to cut out the silence, cut out the mistakes, make it into one coherent whole and that takes time and effort to learn to edit videos. So here's some concepts, and we'll explore these more in detail. And we've got a video, and we've got stuff to do on YouTube, but any questions at this point? Okay, so we've got a video, we've got some ideas, and we need to create a YouTube channel. So I'll let's some notes on here. Any person or business can create a YouTube channel. AKA profile. YouTube is going to call them channels. You might know them as profiles on Facebook or a page on Facebook or a page on Google Plus or a profile on Twitter. They call them channels on, uh, on YouTube. One email can create multiple channels. So I'm going to say one email, business email or personal email. Business email or personal email, doesn't matter, can create multiple channels. If you have a Gmail or a Google+, Plus, the process is faster. because Google owns Gmail, Google Plus, and YouTube. If you've got an Android phone, Google owns that too. So Google has its uh, you know, range of products. And so if you've gotten an Android phone, most likely it asks you to create a profile, some sort of email, you've got your Gmail. With that Gmail, then we can create the, the YouTube channel. Last week we talked about creating a Google Plus. And so we will use that as a stepping stone to then create these channels. In the beginning, you are given a gibberish URL. Like Google+, Plus. when we create our Google+, Plus, it won't let us claim our short address yet. It wants to prevent spam, so it doesn't let us create that address yet. Uh, YouTube is much stricter, and they've just in incorporated this very recently. Because anyone can create a YouTube, and therefore any spammer can create a YouTube, very recently, I don't know when it happened, but I noticed it within the last year at the most. It looks like now you need to get 100 followers on YouTube to claim your name. And that could be a big challenge. So you're going to have to have a gibberish address, which is a valid link, but it's not going to roll off the tongue. And uh, in the old days, a year ago, you'd be able to claim your name 
so that you have this uh, short address. After 100 subscribers, that's the proper term, subscribers to your channel, after 100 followers to your profile, then you'll be able to claim a name. In the meantime, use a link shortener like uh, bit.ly.com. Bitly.com is a uh, service that you can go and create a free account and what you do is you give Bitly a long address and it will shorten it down and you can customize it. So if YouTube gives you youtube.com slash profile slash 125879, Bitly can convert it into bitly.com slash Victor's channel. At least it's something memorable. One example, I have one of these channels that I manage j.mp slash vmc finance that still has it doesn't have a hundred subscribers yet so we can't choose the short name yet it has a long name of youtube.com slash channel slash 19925x whatever but over on bitly I can get that name j.mp so like jump slash vmc finance and then that automatically directs people to the right address You get follow. Uh, you get subscribers on YouTube, also known as followers. You get comments, thumbs up or down, messages, like any other social network. I tweet something. I put it on Twitter, and it's a great picture or link or whatever, and someone gives me a favorite or a heart, they've shown they've liked it. On Facebook, I share something on Facebook, I get the, I get the like, or the new ones which are the, the like, the smiley face, the angry face, all of that. I get some sort of feedback. And then on um, YouTube, I can get thumbs up or thumbs down. Uh, so if people are liking my video, they can give it a thumbs up, and by default that will be visible to everyone. Everyone will see how popular or unpopular your video is. You can turn that on or off, as we'll see. And if you've been using YouTube for a while, you might remember YouTube actually used to let you give star ratings. One star, two stars, three stars, up to five stars. Uh, a few years ago, YouTube changed it, so it's simply thumbs up, thumbs down. Their reasoning was, most people anyway were giving either one star or five stars. They weren't really giving two stars and four stars, sometimes three stars. And they said, we'll just do thumbs up, thumbs down. So now your video, either people love it or hate it. And they can comment. By default, you can uh, have them automatically comment, or we'll see, which I recommend, uh, allow people's comments after you've approved them. That way you can keep things civil. Can you delete the video? Yes. You can delete. <laughs> well, instead of instead of deleting your video with a lot of thumbs down, just hide your thumbs down. Then people yeah. then people won't know it's. If it gets that bad reception, you probably want to take it off. Yeah. That might be a possibility, but uh, not to get uh, uh, pessimistic, but sometimes a video gets an avalanche of bad uh, feedback, even if it doesn't quite deserve it. Um, the new Ghostbusters movie comes to mind. There's been a, an avalanche of negative comments and thumbs down on that, and unfortunately, uh, I have to say, in my personal opinion, I think that's just a lot of bias toward that movie. And then it just got a lot of thumbs down. It might not be that bad of a movie, but people are really not liking it. The loud people. So, um, let's actually set this up because there's a lot of little nuances that will make more sense as we do it. Go ahead and open up your web browser. Or any questions so far to anything we've talked about? Let's open up your web browser and let's go directly to youtube.com.
one little side thing here that I'll mention also. Uh, you can profit from your channel. Literally, you can make money off of your YouTube videos. You upload videos of any length, of any subject, and they could get they could result in money, uh, real money. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about how to set that up and um, uh, advice and all of that, but uh, you, could be, you could be pulling in some revenue simply from uploading your review videos or your uh, how-to videos and such, and there are people that make a lot of money. One of the, one of the biggest names in, in YouTube from my last, um, the last time I checked it, uh, this person uh, made 12 million dollars off of YouTube last year. Creating YouTube videos. Another channel is about eight million dollars a year. So this could be a little icing on the cake. You've got your website, you've got your Google Plus, you've got your YouTube. On your website you're selling your products but then you're making these YouTube videos and maybe one of them went viral, got popular, and you're making a little money off of it. It's going to range. Anecdotally, I can personally tell you one of my channels is making about ten dollars a month. You know, just enough for a latte and a half. Um, but if you're more popular, you might be able to get more out of it. Yes? Okay, it's making money by driving traffic to your website. That's like what you're talking about. No, it's making money. Uh, have you noticed every time you watch a YouTube video, there's, there's an ad? We'll get to the details of it. But whenever someone clicks on an ad on your YouTube video, you make some money off of that. Other people's ads are put on your videos, and if they click, the, the viewer clicks on that ad, you get money off of that. You just have to basically activate this, follow the rules, and you can make money off of it. It's not that much work to do. So all those ads that you hate and never click on, that could be making someone some money, making you some money. So we'll go to YouTube here, and we will see that there are these various sections, music-related videos, movies, news, 360, which is something new, and I want to learn a little bit more about it, but this is very new in that you can watch a video and sort of like scroll it around and look at all angles of where it was shot. That works best on some of these phones where you load up the video on your phone and you put it into a special headset. You put it on your head and then you move around like this and you're seeing all angles of the video, kind of like virtual reality. It's pretty complex to set up because um, you need a, a special 360-degree camera, which is basically like a, a, an orb that has a camera pointed in every direction. And those are not very cheap. Um, so you might see different things than what I see, but just a quick browse here. Um, I'm seeing Zac Efron and Jimmy try out Zac's crimped 8th grade hairstyle. This was published by The Tonight Show on their channel. Notice you can hover over the name of a channel. There's the name of the video, then the name of the channel. And that particular channel is, is the Tonight Show. It's got, it's got 11 million subscribers. Every time a new video is posted on this channel, 11 million people potentially see it. The main purpose of this, uh, of, of why they have a channel, is, well, they want you to watch the real show at 11.35 p.m. weeknights. This video was uploaded 13 hours ago and so far has more than a quarter of a million views. 2 minutes 47 seconds long. The new Star Trek um, series that's coming back to TV has one, nearly one and a half million views in one day, 51 seconds long. Uh, the Ellen Show uploads videos there too. This is Kanye West on his kids. Ellen has 16 million uh, subscribers on YouTube. Um, 12 hours ago this was uploaded. CBS uploaded this. So big company. So CBS, you know, 50, 70 year old CBS has a YouTube channel. Not quite a million subscribers yet compared to Jimmy Fallon or Ellen is generous. But uh, they've got a presence. So these are big names. right? Um, then there's these uh, sort of YouTube channels that have gotten very popular that, have not, that don't exist in any other place except YouTube. Uh, there's the channel Epic Rap Battles of History. They put out these videos, these very funny videos about these various 
fictional or not personalities that rap battle against each other. Here's Gordon Ramsay rapping against Julia Child. That one's been uploaded one day ago and it's already got 3.7 million views. And on all of these videos, there's most likely going to be an ad. If you click on an ad, they made money. ABC News has that, and uh, tra movie trailers, and just a bunch of types of videos. And then you scroll, and it's going to give you the most popular videos out here. And it's pretty hard to get on the front page of YouTube. Pretty hard, so I wouldn't really think about that as a goal. But I will show you, and anecdotally, it does work. Uh, your video can go viral and can get thousands of views and possibly earn you traffic to your website, earn you income from YouTube, get you leads, get you sales. Uh, we just have to try it. At the top right corner, let's click Sign In. And this will ask you to sign in with a Gmail account. Uh, use the one we used last week, the email address that you used last week to create your, your Google Plus. And then I'll show you how to further use it because, as I said, multiple accounts can be created or administered from one Gmail address. So take a moment to sign in. So take a moment to sign in, and then what we need to do is, I'll, I'll show you that, like Google+, Plus, because one email address can administer many, we need to confirm that we're on the correct account. So as you sign in, if you look on the top right corner, you should see an icon. It may have your logo, it may have your name or your face or something, uh, but this icon at the top right corner, if you click that, in my case, I've got two channels. Uh, one is the main channel, my personal account, and then the other one is the Google Plus account I created last time. Google Plus automatically gives you a YouTube channel. Vice versa, actually. If you create a YouTube channel, it'll give you a Google Plus. So there's always a little bit of a... Of a, of a stumbling block when I teach this. People have this set up in different ways for various reasons. <coughs> what I see when I click on my icon at the top right, I see my account that I created last week. I'm going to click on it and it doesn't it didn't really seem like I did very much. But then after I click on it, I will click on Creator Studio. Let's pause here. This might be different for a bunch of people. Click on your YouTube, uh, your Google Plus channel from last time, and then click on Creator Studio. This is all on the top right icon. If you don't have that, call me over just to confirm where everyone is at here. Do you want to get something like this, perhaps? Okay, I've already used this account previously, so this is what it looks like. When I taught this lesson for another class previously, I get this account. I've got a channel on YouTube. And we uploaded a video, this was a few weeks ago when I taught this class. I uploaded the video, same video that we're working with. It's got 17 views so far. And I get some statistics here. 13 views to my channel within the last 28 days six minutes of watch time. I haven't earned anything, I haven't gotten any subscribers yet. And if I have this set up for what is known as monetization, I haven't earned any money yet. 
So you may see something like this, you may not. It may be telling you something else. Again, tell me what your screen says if it's different than mine, because uh, it's different. Okay, perfect. So uh, let me just look over your shoulder there. We do want to do that. Uh, click on, yeah, create a channel right there. If it says you must create one, click on that, and then it'll ask you to create a name there. So it says name and uh, I think that, that's fine. So you want to give it to me a quick on dashboard right there. Everyone should sign in and be at this dashboard. Anyone having any help uh, trouble here? Okay, let me check my notes. Once we set this up the first time, it should behave how I expected, but again, this is our first time, it doesn't. Thank you. Now, YouTube can be used as both. Uh, you, can, you can use YouTube as a consumer or as a creator. When you log into YouTube the first time, you're basically logged in as a consumer. So I'm going to say here, use YouTube as a consumer. Or as a creator. So the consumer is going to be more interested in it's for watching videos. And the creator, obviously, then is for creating videos, sharing videos. Any account, any chat, any account can do both. The trick is to know which mode are you in. And you switch between them with that icon at the top right. I signed in, and then uh, I'm here as a consumer, so I can consume all of these videos, watch all of these things. Um, and then when we clicked on the top right corner, we have Creator Studio. So when you click Creator Studio, we're in the mode now as a creator, because now you'll see different icons and menus here dashboard and all of these that we'll look at in just a moment. <laughs> so that's that's the thing now. So then if I search on YouTube or if I click the YouTube icon up here, it takes me back as a consumer. Watch some videos. But then when I uh, click on the top right over here, Creator Studio, then it says, okay, now you're a creator. Just to show you this because uh, they, they hide some things and I, and I forget sometimes, so I'll show it to you now before I forget. At the top right corner icon, if you instead click on the gear, YouTube settings, this is the place where you can see all my channels or create a new channel. So you can create as many channels as you want. You can manage more than one channel, more than one company, create a different channel for a different product, a different company, a different aspect of your company. Let's say I've got Victor's Bakery, and I'm going to be uploading recipes, uh, videos about recipes. And I'm going to be uploading videos about um, reviews. I could create a different channel for each of them. That will be double the work and double the effort and perhaps double the problem. But you can create more than one channel about anything you want. Instead of separating them into channels like that, we'll talk about this later, we'll talk about playlists, which are to organize your videos. But at the top right corner icon, if you go to the here, the YouTube settings, here's where you can see or create more channels. If you click on the left side, Video Manager, you most likely have nothing to view here. That's fine. But for me, because I have uploaded this on a previous day, it lists what video I, I uploaded it, when I uploaded it, and various quick stats, how many views, any comments on my video, any thumbs up or thumbs down on my video. And I'll be able to see in great detail a lot of stats, like countries where your video is most popular, 
a minute by minute, a second by second breakdown of when people were paying attention to your video. So again, how long to make a video? Well, I would try different sizes, one minute long, five minute long, 30 second long. I would try different kinds of videos, and then as time goes on and people view your videos, you'll see which are most effective, the length that is most popular and such. We will see after we upload a video, we have various things that we could do about our video. And this was the question earlier. Well, I want to delete it. It's, it's been a failure. I can delete it. Uh, the opposite would be I can promote my video. We'll touch on this a little bit, but promoting your video is having your video have it viewed by more people. Not for free, unfortunately. Just like uh, it takes money to put that radio ad out there, to put that commercial on TV, to put that commercial in front of the movie at the movie theater. That stuff is not free. You can do this as well on YouTube. Create a video on a particular product, like um, this is a, a review of a, of a product. I could pay to promote this video and show it more in front of certain videos, tech videos, so that my video pops up before the, the main video and someone might click on it and watch my video. Yes? Um, I don't have any videos uploaded, so I guess it says upload, no videos to match your search. Yeah, exactly. For the moment, because we have not uploaded anything yet, we won't see anything here. But when we upload a video, we'll have something on the screen. Let's look at one more thing here, live streaming. So YouTube has been around, I think this year has been 10 years, or is about to be 10 years or something. Uh, I think you know, YouTube's been around, let's say, a decade. The very first video on YouTube actually was shot at the San Diego Zoo. It was a couple of kids looking at the lions or the elephants or something, and they uploaded it, and that was the very first YouTube video 10 years ago. And so traditionally, YouTube has been, a, has been about uploading a pre-made video. You record your video off of your phone, then you upload it. It's been made, you upload it. Let's say you record a video, then you edit it in iMovie, then you upload it. The video is done, and you upload it to YouTube. That's how things have been for about 9 out of the 10 years that YouTube has existed. Very recently, we've added a feature of live streaming. Now what you can do is have a live broadcast. All of your subscribers, or anyone on YouTube, could tune in and look at your, what you're doing live. Now that requires setup, so you'll have to read the documentation on getting started and all of that. But something like Open Broadcaster that I mentioned can be used. I plug in my web camera, set up Open Broadcaster, I set it up to log into my YouTube, and then I can broadcast live. I can do events which are scheduled and such for free. That is a whole other kettle of fish we're not going to really get to. That's something to think about because this is becoming more popular. Live streaming. So something to consider in the future. Live streaming. Here's some big names in the world of live streaming. Have you heard of Periscope? Meerkat. Lab. I am uh, ustream.tv, justin.tv, twitch.tv, on and on. Facebook has gotten into it. And of course, YouTube was first. All of these sites and many others let you do live broadcasting. Periscope and Meerkat uh, are a couple of apps that you can download for your phone. You create an account. Periscope is owned by Twitter. Uh, Meerkat is independent. And you download Periscope, you set it up, and then right from your phone you click live. And then you're live. And you're showing the world, your followers, what you're viewing. Or you flip the camera around and you're talking to your followers. Um, regular people use this. Companies use this. I saw a broadcast um, when, the, um, oh, when the Pope visited the U.S. Uh, last year. Uh, the White House had a live Periscope broadcast going on. So I saw the Pope get off the plane. I didn't watch it on CNN. I watched it on someone holding a phone, standing there, 
uh, from the official White House Periscope account. So for you, for, for, for your business, okay, I heard about streaming, my instructor tells me it's cool, well, what would I use it for? Again, um, all of this social media stuff is in service to you as a business. Possible ideas. Yes? Do any of those uh, apps require that you have a cable TV account to use them? Like, I get a lot of what you see uh, online and it says, you know, you got to have the cable account to, yeah. to use it. But are those usable without a cable account? It, it is independent, but you need some sort of internet access. So I've got Cox, and I've got an internet package with a TV package. I don't need the TV package to use any of that, but I need internet access. So besides that, you could use your AT&T, you know, 3G or whatever. You can use your home Wi-Fi. So no, you don't need any cable, pa uh, any you know, cable package. You just need internet access. Is there yes. a cost to using this live stream? To my knowledge, no. All of them at the moment are, are totally free because it's so new. They haven't quite really thought about making it for pay just yet. They might in the future. Uh, Ustream was one of the oldest ones that did this first. They've been doing this probably now that I think about it for at least seven years. Um, they're a big name in, in streaming, but there's so many upstarts. Twitch is becoming a big one. They got bought by Amazon for like probably a billion dollars. And Periscope is huge and backed by Twitter. That one's super big. Ustream makes its money by selling special software that connects to their system. But you can use the free software like Open Broadcaster. It's just that Ustream sells their pro broadcaster system for like $300 a pop. That's how they make their money. All these other guys, Twitch, I think they have some way to make money too. And, and YouTube, they rely on people paying to promote their stuff. There's so many videos out there. There's a, there's a crazy stat out there that's like 100, 100 hours worth of videos uploaded every minute to YouTube. Some crazy stat. So they make their money off of promoting your video because you're going to get lost in the crowd. So These are all pretty much free. Ideas of how you would use this is live behind the scenes looks. You know, off the cuff content. I've got Victor's Bakery and let's say I've also got a Facebook or a Twitter and I'm telling people uh, step inside our kitchen live next Monday and I keep mentioning that throughout the week so hopefully I'm building attention for that and then when it's that Monday I turn on my Periscope or I turn on my YouTube live or I turn on Facebook they just activated this for regular people I turn on some live streaming system and I might get people to join in and watch on Periscope for example you see oh 10 people are watching 12 people are watching and people can comment live at that moment you can say okay we're gonna go look in the kitchen here's here's what we've got cooking up today looks really nice and someone's asked, oh, what, what, what is that? And then I answer, oh, this is our brand new creme brulee with, uh, with uh, almond paste or something. And people can comment and I can talk to them. They can give hearts. Hearts are just a way to show that they've liked it. Same thing with YouTube video. Here's another way that I, that I saw this. Uh, so I teach this Android programming class. And uh, the, the software that we use there is made, out of, is made from a team, a small team that comes from the larger Microsoft company. That team has had various live, um, live meetups where they talk about what's new in the software and you can answer questions. So I've been to a few of those. I got, I'm on the mailing list. They say we're going to have a live chat about the product next week. It's all totally free. You just follow the link at the day and time. And I've done that. I, I, I'm at my computer, I'm, it's in the morning, and then I go in and I watch the live video. Everyone's talking about the product, and I ask a question. I said, are you guys going to incorporate uh, the Taco Kit version 2 instead of the version 1 at some point? And then they answered me at that point. And everyone saw the question, and everyone saw the answer. So think about that. Just showing behind-the-scenes stuff, having a Q&A doing a live Q&A. You can't really do that on a pre-recorded video. But this, if you get an audience asking questions, you can answer them.
Yeah. When interacting with these apps, whether it's the YouTube or the other Google apps, is there any distinct advantage to using an Android phone as opposed to an iPhone? No, not really. Um, there's a couple nuances here and there that I've noticed. Uh, it seems that different teams work on the different versions. So one team might be a little ahead than the other. So sometimes, because I've got both, I've got all the devices. I've got a Windows phone, an iPhone, and an Android. So I keep up to date with it all. And I see sometimes one platform is missing one feature for maybe a week or two, and then it gets it. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, they're the same, same experience. They're all trying to have everyone get on, on their platform regardless of what you might have. So this is a whole other kettle of fish we're not really going to get to talk about, and this is the this is the brave new world of the future, perhaps. It seems to be very popular, Periscope live streaming, so popular that Facebook is getting in on the act, eating YouTube's lunch, perhaps. But there's room for everyone at the moment, and that's all under the live streaming tab that you can explore at your, at your own pace. We're going to stick with a pre-recorded video. And we'll look at these other settings in just a moment. Um, actually, let's check our time here. It's been about an hour, so let's take a, let's take our first break, and um, when we come back, we'll uh, we'll look at these other settings. We'll upload the video. We'll talk about the nuances of optimizing and how to get views for your videos. Because, like I said, on this test account that I made uh, about a month ago, I have this is a completely test account. It's not even a real account. And I've got 17 views. <laughs> so I'll show you how you can do that. So it's 7.13. We'll be back at uh, 7.23. We'll take a quick 10-minute break and then we'll go on. <laughs>